Hi everyone, this is Ed Amoroso from Tag Cyber, and I have a really special guest today uh, here with me in New York City. Um, someone I've known for a while, an icon in our industry, uh, Tamer Hassan, who is the CEO of a really cool company called Human Security. Tamer, thanks for coming by. How are you doing? Good. Great to see you. It's great to spend some time with you again. Thank it, you for having me. It's wonderful to see you. Hey, let's start <coughs> by just um, maybe getting a 101 on the company. And then I want to dig into the tech and a little bit about you and about the industry, but tell us about the company. Sure. Uh, Human Security is a cybersecurity company that protects organizations against bot attacks. Mm -hmm. We've been doing this for about 10 years. We're the largest bot mitigation company on the internet. We see about 15 trillion API calls into our system a week. Wow. We touch probably half of the global online population that we're verifying who's real and who's not as they engage in different application sites and use cases. Uh, one of the most important problems in modern security is the use of bots for uh, a, a whole variety of threats. Now, I think I know the answer, but I'll make believe I don't. What's a bot? Yes. Oh, <laughs> such a great question. It could be as simple as 30 lines of code, or it could be as complex as a million node botnet with a layered command and control system. Ultimately, the goal from an attacker perspective, and it's always the right mindset to start, right, is um, to look like a million humans. And then the question is, what can you do if you can look like a million humans? Um, bots typically break out into two categories. There's nuisance bots, the relatively basic yeah. things like crawling, yeah. <laughs> uh, th th things that are known. Uh, and then there's sophisticated bots, which we see make up about 70 to 75 percent of attacks and security incidents and fraud incidents. And those usually comprise of malware infected machines. Mm -hmm. So ultimately what a bot is in that perspective is it's all of our machines infected. And it's my daughter's iPad that I didn't police well enough, mm -hmm. all the games. And it's running something in the background and uh, it's interacting with a variety of uh, sites, applications or whatever the attackers um, um, ultimate motive is it could be an account takeover, it could be to manipulate the popularity of something, it could be to steal sneakers or a PS2. Um, but a bot is essentially an automated machine to interact and look human for a variety of uh, interactions. What, what are the motivations <laughs> typically that you guys see in all these interactions? I guess that's a lot of data. Is it, um, are these nation state actors? Are they thieves? Are they a bunch of kids doing this? What, what kind of motivations do you see? And, what, and how did that play out in sort of these attack vectors? Sure, yeah, it spans the full gamut. Um, I think ultimately in security and especially application security, we see the variety of attacks being financially driven. Yeah. And there's a lot of great data. Uh, and, and there's a smaller set, um, you know, sub 20%, 10 to 15% that, that are more nation state, more influence driven, or, or the theft of data. Um, uh, those end up being the primary mechanisms, is, is financial, um, financial gain, uh, stealing of sensitive data, hmm. or manipulation of some metric. Uh, and, and so we see use cases from the basics, the probably the most common is account takeover, credential stuffing to uh, get access to a system. And so in, in, in a financial uh, bank, it would be to move money or automate you know, a set of transactions. In an e-commerce platform, it's typically something like sniping and scalping of goods. Um, and uh, in other areas in media, it's typically the manipulation of the popularity of something. We've picked up a, on bots even, designed to listen to music on streaming media platforms. Um, and there's an entire marketplace for bots to do that because there's something incredibly valuable about increasing the popularity of a song. Um, so it really spans the, the gamut. Everywhere there's a human in interaction, everywhere you can think of an incentive um, you know, all the way to your right, there's, there's other influence type operations. You know, a couple years ago, we were facing the, the vote for net neutrality, mm. right? One of the most important uh, policies right. of our decade. Right. And the FCC had a comment portal, uh, millions of comments from public opinion that uh, our policymakers were going to use uh, to, to review in their decision making process. Millions that were bot driven with the identities of dead people, essentially bot driven <laughs> comments. They actually had a call for a delay in the vote, um, and that's that's and, and we saw that one right. The, uh, um, they they caught that uh, because it was a basic bot. You have mm. to wonder at that point what what we're not seeing. 
in the background. But so it, it spans the full range. You know, we've all uh, visited a website and had something pop up and say, are you a human? And then you try and read the letters <coughs> and stuff that are in there. Take me from that to maybe some more advanced analytics, because you guys are pretty good at this. Well, is, is that sort of on the low end of the spectrum, or is that in the middle? What, uh, help me understand how that resides in, the, uh, in this tech. I'll say um, it's the wrong approach to test all the humans instead of testing the bad guys. Like we're putting the burden of proof Interesting. on all of, our, um, all of our humans, all of our um, customers, right? And uh, and, and it's the wrong idea. And it's also categorically defeated. It's mm -hmm. relatively simple to defeat yeah. um, with ML. And there's been you know, work in academia on this. There's been public publications on, on defeating um, those types of solutions with, with some machine learning approaches. Um, our approach go, uh, started off uh, from a different angle, and that's a, it was a technical evidence-based approach. We interrogate the environment. We collect signal. We have 350 algorithms across these 15 trillion transactions that evaluate um, signs of automation, remote control, and other aspects. And we do it transparently in the background with a single line of code. So the, the companies that work with us, they'll deploy a single line of code. Uh, in advanced cases, they'll deploy it in SDK and mobile or even in connected TV devices. That code will run and evaluate whether something's human or not at the time of the interaction. Um, the, the, re the real game is beyond that, and that involves modern defense strategy. Mm -hmm. That's probably the most important <clears throat> principle for the company as we founded it 10 years ago, and that's the observation that this is an economic problem. The, the, um, it all comes down to the cost of the attack and the cost of defense, as we all know in security. And that's a, um, uh, in a defensive position, that's a difficult place to be. It's one that you don't have that, um, that advantage. And so a lot of what we built, both from an algorithm technology perspective, process, um, customers, and collaboration law enforcement is designed to increase the cost of attack using deception, collective right. protection, in some cases collective disruption, uh, making collaboration with law enforcement simple, easy, accessible when our customers want to do that. All of this has to lead to, it actually costs more to do the attack than it, than it did previously. In security today, we're, we're essentially playing a losing battle. Mm. We're playing defense only, waiting for the next attack. It's like playing against the house in Vegas, we all know if we play long enough, we will lose, right? And they have a 1% advantage. Um, and so the strategy has to be different in defensive security for, for problems like this. So this modern <clears throat> defense strategy has the two elements, make it more expensive to attack and less expensive to defend. And are, are, is the unit, are the units dollars there, or is it maybe broader than that? Time, effort, money, resources, is it all, all, all of that? Is, it, is that the idea? For that's, that's exactly the idea, yeah. and it's all the mechanisms that can do that, and you're right, it's, the, um, it's a great question. It spans everything. It's not just about dollars. It could be about um, pain. It could be about consequence, right? right? When something is harder to break into, or you um, include some deception elements that manipulate the feedback loop back to an attacker. Mm. It takes a lot longer. It might be a lot more expensive for them to figure out what they're doing, whether it works, whether, whether it doesn't. Um, in some cases, we have even uh, policy policies built into our policy engine to, um, to give misinformation, maybe um, uh, feedback bad data when we know it's a bot, mm -hmm. let them think that they've succeeded, et cetera. Um, all of these are t techniques and approaches, um, ultimately on the pillars of a few things. One, collective protection. Two, global intelligence and visibility, and having that purview across the internet is critical. And, uh, and three, changing the economics, the cost of the attack, and everything that we can do there. Um, and so we'll go as far as to do disruptions and takedowns. Sometimes we'll put together private companies. We've done that with folks like Google and Amazon and others, and, and, and sometimes we'll do it with law enforcement if, right. uh, if, if we can uh, have an impact to support them in actually enforcing the consequences, because that's obviously their, their approach to the problem. That's very cool. You know, think about the companies that would benefit from this type of thing in the range of sort of traditional companies to modern, say, cloud-native companies. 
I can see everybody benefiting, but I'm thinking that the, the cloud native and some of the more modern firms must eat this alive. They must, this is their business, right? I'm, I'm, Am I getting that right? A lot, yeah. a lot of the newer companies must be really into this. You know, it's uh, that is right, it, it, but it applies to everybody, and, and, yeah. and even the small companies that can't fund a large security operation. And this is where we're missing the opportunity um, to connect everybody. Where uh, you know, a part of our uh, defense engine, our, our human defense platform is collective protection and attack on one customer's protection on all. Right, right, right And right. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's the largest platform on the internet, uh, it doesn't matter if it's a competitor, it doesn't matter if it's a, net, uh, a small company, it all, it all feeds into global protection. We have a subset of customers that opt into something called the human collective where um, they've agreed and aligned on this ethos of, um, of collaboration and going beyond just detection and blocking, which is where we have to go to um, sharing information or um, participating in disruptions and things like that. Um, but I'll say that the, um, where it resonates the most is with security teams that have been fighting the fight for years. And um, what I see is this this light for a moment that's it's a, it's refreshing, right? Mm. We, you mean we don't have to just sit here and wait for the next attack. We can do something. We can go beyond blocking into some sort of offensive action that addresses uh, the economics of the problem. And uh, a lot of modern security teams really appreciate that and they want to opt in, they, they, they want to opt into that and be a part of it. Do the lawyers give you a hard time or in, in the uh, companies have their lawyers kind of, sometimes they cringe when they hear collective, they think that's sharing data. Well, what's been your experience with that? Yeah, it, it ranges, you know, we don't have a single customer that's opted out and, um, mm -hmm. and, and we won't, you know, I, I think that's essentially a losing strategy and you know my general point is well I, we hope we can get you to come around and we're, we're doing all of these things around privacy and um, and uh, in the safety of data um, but that path is a losing path good luck if you want to if you want to do it on your own we, we will all lose if if we don't um, actually enable the ability to collaborate um, yeah I mean that makes sense yeah, it's kind of <clears throat> depressing that anybody would even question it. We just see at times um, lawyers still having a little ways to go before they're allowing the ops teams to work on collectives, but I'm all for it. I think collectives provide context, they provide depth, and they provide some partnership that people really need. This is a hard problem. Now, let's talk government. You mentioned earlier law enforcement. What's been your... Uh, experience working, let, may, let's say civilian agencies and maybe state, have they, like for eGov and for good government, I would imagine this would be part of um, uh, improving the user experience, part of you know, stopping some of these bad um, attack vectors. Have you guys uh, spent time with government? Yeah, we just launched into the Gov space this good. year. I'm glad and, uh, and we, we have a lot of early progress. Um, uh, and, and for years before that, we've we've collaborated with uh, mostly DOJ on uh, on a handful of mm -hmm. um, of attacks and botnets, and uh, even the largest uh, cyber collaboration with FBI in history. We we led uh, thirty companies. We pulled together. It ended up being six governments to yeah. support um, the New York cyber uh, FBI team, which was a fantastic and talented team. Uh, to ultimately get to the point where eight Russian cyber criminals were indicted, four of them were extradited, yeah. and, uh, and the trial concluded um, just late last year uh, yeah. and culminated with uh, 10 years and uh, a sentence for, for the ringleader, which is uh, unprecedented. That was good work it's, by you guys. It's, uh, it's amazing collaboration, and, and it shows what happens when you can work together. Because you know, from the moment we sent the lead, uh, to the time that they were extradited in, uh, in jail in Brooklyn was less than 24 months. And that's unheard of. Um, and, uh, but it was possible because of the collective. And, that, and then it was the Aversion Working Group that was behind it uh, that included Google, Amazon, Facebook, mm -hmm. AT&T, amazing companies yeah. in collaboration. Um, but it shows what's possible. And, I, and, and I'm excited also about... Um, you know the, the the folks in the cyber side in government today, like Chris Inglis and 
um, you know, the, the JCDC, the, yeah. the collaboration effort. It's all, everybody is coming to the same conclusion about this point that um, we can punch back collectively and, and, and address the fundamentals of the attack. That's great. So the world is becoming more automated, <laughs> not less. Right? And um, kind of looking forward, if you look into the next few years, do you see this problem? Just, I know you guys are working to reduce the problem, so keep doing what you're doing. But do you see the intensity of this maybe increasing with uh, increased automation? Like, will my car become a part of some botnet at some point if I'm not careful? Yeah, yeah, that's actually, I've been waiting to see the first Tesla, Tesla botnet in our yeah, data because right. there's a browser in the Tesla. Um, the, uh, the reality is that it's growing, but um, for the first time in, in a decade, the awareness is much higher. It, um, it's a top three problem for most CISOs. They recognize the importance of That's it. That's been my experience as well. And, uh, yeah. it, and you know, I'd say about 20% of companies actually have a purpose-built solution in place. Uh, so there's still a lot of work to do, and that, that, that market is growing at 25% year over year wow. um, as it expands. Um, the, the data shows that 77% of security incidents have a bot used somewhere in the attack cycle. Uh, so the real picture that we've learned is that it's not, um, it's not about a single uh, attack type. It's actually a tool, a modern tool for attackers. And if you're not using automation as an attacker, you're, it's like you're running right. on Windows Vista or something, right? And, and, and so it, it's, it's being used across the board, whether it's for recon, vol vuln scanning, breaking into the account, scraping of sensitive data. Um, automation is gonna be used somewhere in the attack cycle, and it's the, the most um, unaddressed part of uh, the attack cycle and an opportunity to get visibility and defense on just a fundamental behavior that's a part of over three quarters of security incidents. That's something. So, Tamara, anything that we didn't cover that uh, maybe I should have included in our discussion? We've covered a lot of real estate here, covered a lot of ground. I hope people listening got a sense of the problem, a sense of how you guys are approaching it with the platform and analytics. But anything we may, I'm trying to think if there's any other areas that we forgot. Yeah, look, I th um, the reality is that right now, most of us are playing a losing game in security, yeah. playing defense only. Yeah, true. And um, you know, essentially we're playing a strategy to minimize losses and, and that's essentially a strategy to lose yeah. and that has to change. I, I remember uh, one of the first lessons I learned, I spent some time in the Air Force, mm -hmm. 10 years as an aviator in, in search and rescue uh, PFOC helicopters. The first lesson I ever learned about combat was when I was in a classroom, well before I was in Iraq or Afghanistan and the instructor said to us, a small group, if you're ever going into a battle to fight a fair fight, you should turn around. Yeah, fair fights don't work out. That's not the strategy. You know, you have to tip it the advantage yeah. to your side. Yeah. Use data, use intelligence, use deception, use, use uh, collective protection. All of these mechanisms, they're critical um, to modernizing defensive cybersecurity. Yeah, that's very inspiring. So. Probably applies to a lot of cybersecurity, right? That whole idea of Absolutely. using intelligence and contacts. So I appreciate everything you do for our industry. Keep doing it. You still enjoy running the company? I do. Um, you know, it, it's, um, it's an amazing group of people yeah. and a really important problem. And that's what drives most of the people at, at, at Human is the ability to have an impact on something so precious to us, the internet and the integrity of it. That's actually the mission statement of the company. The, the uh, statement of purpose is to protect the integrity of the internet. And it draws the best and the brightest when you have a challenging problem uh, worth doing, worth spending time on. Uh, so it's been, uh, it's been a, a, a run for 10 years, but it's, it's, an, it's an amazing uh, team. And we're just getting started in this area. So. Well, you should be proud. I've known you for a few years. It's been fun to watch you grow the company. I hope you keep going. I hope you keep uh, expanding your base. Now, for folks watching, um, I would imagine the website would be a good place for them to visit if they have some interest, if we've managed to pique their interest sufficiently here. Humansecurity.com and, uh, just, and, and just reach out to us. Whether you want to be a customer, a partner, or 
talk more about modern defense and the things that we can put in place. That's all um, a part of what we're doing in, in, in the industry. That's great. Well, once again, on behalf of my team at Tag Cyber, thanks for coming by. Nice Always a pleasure. You. Thank you for having me. Wonderful to see you. For everyone else, we'll see you next time.